In the first two videos in this series, we learned a few of the fundamental rules of accounting and bookkeeping. We also looked at a few simple business transactions and learned how to figure out the details of the debits and credits of those transactions. In this video, we're going to build on that knowledge and learn how to use T-accounts. As you'll see in this video, T-accounts are a very handy tool to use when trying to figure out the entries you need to make into your set of accounts for both simple transactions, like the ones we've seen so far, but also for more complicated transactions. I'm talking about transactions in which more than just one debit and one credit need to be posted into your accounts. Once you get the hang of using T-accounts, you will easily be able to figure out exactly where to post the details in your set of accounts of any transaction that occurs in your business. So let's dive in and see how it's done. T accounts are given their name because that's exactly what they look like, the letter T. To create a T account, you need to draw a big T on a piece of paper and label the left side debit and the right side credit. Then, you name the T account after one of the general ledger accounts you're going to use for the transaction in question. For a simple transaction that affects two general ledger accounts, you would create two T accounts. For a more complicated transaction that affects more than two general ledger accounts, you would create more than two T accounts. Basically, every general ledger account affected by a transaction needs its own T account. To illustrate this point, let's take a look at how to do the T accounts for a simple transaction that requires two entries into your set of accounts. After that, we'll take a look at a more complicated transaction. Let's take the sale transaction we used in the previous videos in this series. In that transaction, a client paid you by transferring $500 into your business bank account after you designed a logo for them. As we learned in the previous videos, this is a simple two entry transaction. All we need to do is post a $500 debit into the cash at bank asset account and a $500 credit into the sales income revenue account. Let's see how to use T-accounts to map out the two entries for this transaction. First, we need to create a couple of T-accounts to represent the cash at bank and sales income general ledger accounts. Let's draw the two T-accounts, name them, and label the debit and credit sides. Next, we need to take each part of the transaction and put the details into the T-accounts. Because you received $500 into your bank account, you need to enter $500 on the debit side of the Cash at Bank T account. And because you earned that $500 for doing some work for a client, you need to enter $500 on the credit side of the Sales Income T account. So as you can see, we have $500 of debits and $500 of credits, which means the transaction balances in our set of accounts. If you don't know how to work out which general ledger accounts to assign those entries to, or you don't know how to decide which entry should be a debit and which entry should be a credit, check out the earlier videos in this series. To finish off these two T accounts, I just want to show you that it is customary to write the name of the opposite side of the entry next to the values. So, in the Cash at Bank T account, you would write Sales Income beside the $500 debit. That's because sales income is the opposite side of the entry in our set of accounts. Likewise, you would write cash at bank beside the $500 credit in the sales income T account. The reason we do this is so we can easily see where to find the other side of the transaction. This may seem a little pointless for a simple two entry transaction, but when you have more complicated transactions with multiple T accounts, and multiple debit and credit entries, you'll find it very handy. Okay, so that was a simple transaction with only two entries that need to go into your set of accounts. Let's take a look now at a more complicated transaction that requires more than two entries. Before we start, I should point out that even though there are more than two entries, all the rules of accounting and bookkeeping we've learned so far still apply. In other words, 
you still need to end up with the same total value of debits and credits in your set of accounts after posting the entries for this transaction. Let's do a slightly different version of the previous transaction to see what I mean. Instead of your client transferring $500 into your bank account after you created a logo for them, let's say they transferred $300 and planned on transferring the remaining $200 next month. Because the total sale was for $500, just like before, you need to enter $500 of debits and $500 of credits into your accounts. It's still a $500 transaction, even though you've only been paid $300 so far. To do this, you need to post the $500 credit to the sales income revenue account, just as you did before. But instead of posting a $500 debit to the cash at bank asset account, you can only post $300. That's because your client only transferred $300 into your bank account, and you need to reflect exactly that in your set of accounts. So now you have $500 of credits and $300 of debits ready to post into your accounts. That, I'm sure you'll agree, is not acceptable. You need to post the remaining $200 of debits somewhere, and the place to do that is the Accounts Receivable General Ledger account. Accounts Receivable is an asset account, and it's used to keep a record of money that is owed to you. Because it's an asset, it is debit by nature, so when it increases in value, you need to post a debit entry. Because your client owes you $200, the value of accounts receivable has increased by $200, which means you need to post that amount as a debit to your accounts receivable general ledger account. So effectively, the $500 debit side of the sale transaction has been split up into two entries, a $300 debit to cash at bank and a $200 debit to accounts receivable. As you can see, this is slightly more complicated than a simple two entry transaction, but it still follows the accounting and bookkeeping rules we've learned so far. We still end up with $500 of debits and $500 of credits. Okay, let's see how to represent this transaction in our T accounts. Because we are making entries into three different general ledger accounts, we need to draw up three T accounts, one for sales income, one for cash at bank, and one for accounts receivable. To put the transaction into our T accounts, we need to split it up into four entries. You could get away with putting it in as three entries, but then you wouldn't be able to add the name of the opposite side of the entries next to the amounts. That may be confusing, so let me show you what I mean. Here we have our three T accounts. If you were to enter just the numbers, you could do it like this. $500 on the credit side of sales income, $300 on the debit side of cash at bank, and $200 on the debit side of accounts receivable. But if you do it like that, you can't write the name of the opposite side of the entry next to the $500 in the sales income T account. That's because the opposite side is split between the cash at bank and accounts receivable accounts. So instead, you can split the sales income amount into two entries, one for $300 and one for $200, and then you could add the name of the opposite side of each entry to each line. The end result is that we have four entries in our T accounts instead of three. Once again, this might seem pointless for a reasonably simple transaction, but if you need to create T accounts for far more complicated transactions, being able to tell where the opposite side of an entry sits on a page full of T accounts can be very handy. Okay, that's it for this video. In the next video, which is the last in the series, we're going to take a look at the double entry accounting system. And if you've watched every video in this series so far, you may be pleasantly surprised by how much you already know about double entry accounting. See you there.